finally we have gotten to the painting of the eggs and finally I have gotten in my uh, really nice sunlight lamp that I told you about in another video. Now in my painting eggs introduction part one and two I told you about the egg. Here it is. This is my five inch. This is what it looks like without the glue. Okay, you'll have to watch the other videos to understand what I mean by that. Uh, here it is with the top glued. Okay, and here is our land. Um, this is all the land that I did on it. All right, and now we're going to start some of this detailing today. All right, on this egg, I'll start some on this egg, and where I have some already completed on my goose egg, I'll continue on. With that so we have our palette way over here I've got my water I've got my brushes I've got my little rag and like I said everything is about efficiency and convenience so everything is at my fingertips to just start painting whenever I want to start painting and what I will do first is put on my homes and my church and my salt box houses so for the homes I need a red of some kind Oh, I think I'll do the regular red number three that came in my packet here. So I, I've talked about that in other uh, other videos as well. Uh, so that's the red we'll use for that. And then for my homes, I have, I looked for a white, so I looked for my cap. This happens to be a vintage white, but like I said, I look for caps, don't look for colors. And I'm going to put some of the vintage white into my palette and I use my little tiny brush my expensive one I was telling you about that I got from uh, Joanne Fabrics I say expensive but it was only two dollars okay so I mix a little bit of water with the paint so the paint will flow better and I do have a floating medium but I don't find it works all that great so I just pretend to use I just prefer to use water and that's what I'm going to use today and remember I was telling you about those triangles and, and squares and dots and that's all you need? Well, you know, it doesn't really matter where I'm going to put it. I'll just start a home. So the first part of the home is making a triangle. All right. And then after you make the triangle, you're going to make a square underneath it. And after you make that square, and a little bit more paint, got to keep loading your brush you're going to make another square next to it. Now once you do the two squares in your triangle for your home, fill it in. Just fill it in with the white. Okay. Just going to be filling it in here real quick. And right now you have the basis of one of your homes. Okay. Now Let's switch over from home to salt box. And, and one of the things about these eggs is I find they easily slip out of my hand now and then. I mean, I'll be painting, and then all of a sudden it'll be, whoa, 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 come back here. And it might make a few scuff marks on the paint that I already did. See, there it fell over again. And um, if that happens, hey, you know, you get a little mark on your paint, put a tree or a sheep on it. No big deal. Now let's go over to the red. And because I'm using a lavalier mic, I'm not sure you can hear it, but there's a raging thunderstorm outside today. And like I said in a previous video, wonderful. Listen to the thunderstorm, do your crafts. It's like being at the spa. All right, so I'm going to just dip my paint, my brush here in the paint. I'll see how much it flows, how well it flows. And let's, we'll do a salt box down here. Salt box is, as you saw on my grungy tags video, a rectangle and so we make the rectangle and the reason why we're just making our little triangle squares and rectangles right now we're not going right into the detail of each one is so we can allow them to dry before we do something else okay hopefully you can see this good it's a little hard to do these egg paintings on this angle I don't have somebody that's videoing for me so I have to stand it up on a tripod and there we have it. All right, now, while this is drying, I will go over to my goose egg, which I have already done some. This salt box house happens to be a rectangle with a little square next to it. This is a home. 
this is a salt box house it's just the rect the rectangle and here's a church okay look at that i got a little spot on my church but nobody's going to see that because i'm going to show you what's going to happen next so for all of my roofs i used that dark brown paint that i had showed you earlier indoor outdoor i didn't care what it was i think the only reason i bought it was because it was probably 97 cents or something versus a dollar 47 for another type of acrylic didn't need to pay a dollar 47 when it was 97 cents like i said it's not that i'm some kind of a cheapskate because i do waste a lot of this paint too but um it's just that i just you know obviously if one's 97 and one's a dollar 47 then nobody's going to know the difference but you why not go for it so we made our triangle our two x's and then this way for the church we made a little rectangle on the top of the roof okay and then you're going to take your brown paint and you're going to go down like this right through that white that you made for your steeple okay and you're going to do the same thing on this side you're going to basically pretend like that steeple isn't there because we do the same thing for the homes and you'll make another line here and you can extend it a little past the base and then kind of eyeball it you know you're going to come up a little bit and then you're going to bring it across and you're going to fill that in like so and normally i would have it where the lines were going up and down so in a way it kind of looks like a roof after it dries a little bit more and for our steeple we're going to do a triangle so you're just a series of triangles dots half circles lines check marks everything you learned in kindergarten and then for our cross i gotta be a little bit easier on this we're gonna go really easy with the with the brush make a straight line down and a line across okay and we've made our cross and what i usually do at this point is i shade in and this this video is going to be in several parts because it is a little bit more difficult than the other crafts that i do so i'm going to wet a brush this brush happens to be you know a, one of those flat brushes with the square ends but it's a smaller one and i just want to i want to shade in a little bit the sides here of this home you know so i just like i did on the other video um, when i was showing you shading of the land um, i'm just dipping just a little bit of the tip of the edge in a brown paint and it's very watered down and i'll flip the brush i did it this way for this here flip the brush to do this edge okay and then usually i'll even go along the bottom to make it look like the house is standing on some type of earth and then just blend that in a little bit once it's dry you really can't tell but it'll make it look like you know there's some kind of depth to the house and uh, usually I'll go it around and I'll do all of those at one time but I'm just trying to give you a general idea how this is done here so once again we go back to our brown and we make two squares for windows didn't fill in enough put a little bit more brown on there and for the churches i always make a half circle for the doors so i gotta really hold on to it go all the way around and make a half circle like that and then i make a straight line down the middle and two dots for doorknobs and basically your church is done okay and then what you'll do be careful not to touch anything that's wet and as you can see i don't know if you can see uh it's almost dry already so you'll be able to put your fingers on there in a minute as you go around to do the other ones now this one's just your plain house so let's do one more time we're going to just fill this in okay you make your triangle well in this case for the house tops you're making a half a triangle you're getting your roof in there you're going to extend a little past the house go up on a half of you know just a straight line but on an angle until you get to about the top of the roof there and then bring another straight line across and fill this in
All right. You've got your two windows, which are your little squares. And this one, I forgot to shade it in, so I'll just shade it in now. No big deal. Always can go back and fix something. Not a big deal. So I'm going to stick the point in there. And I'm going to go here. Eh, a little bit too watery. Flip it. And do here. On this side. And let me just fix something here. I had my brush down in the wrong paint, so I've got to really fix fix my little paint mess I made over here and wipe that off. Wipe my hands a little bit. I always have a filthy rag, <laughs> my paint rag on my desk, and um, so I'm. A, you know, these windows are dry now. Look, I even got my hand on this house; it's already dry. Um, so now I'm going to go, because these windows are dry, I can go over there and um, shade that part of the house that I forgot to shade. Don't put too much paint on there, you know, just your corner, all right? And then, again, go under the house with a line, blend it in a little bit, dot it a little bit so that when it dries, it'll look like little, you know, whatever. Just giving the house some depth that it's sitting on. Um, you see that area right there? where I painted before it had dried, so some of the paint came off. I'm going to put something there, probably a little sheep or something, later on when I'm filling in the mountain area, so that it will be covered up. And uh, we're going to go now to part two. See you in a little bit.